This is what I'm saying. I'm okay. I'm just making dinner. I'm just putting the kids to bed. Okay, but mm, yeah. if we just drop down like one level even. Yeah, you don't have to go dive in you don't have in to the deep is. end. You don't have to do that. Just take a step on the Baja step. We love a Baja step. <laughs> Do you still got your head above water? Yeah. You're just getting some sun, also getting some water. Both and. Hey, Beth. Hey, Jenna. How are you? So good. Third time's a charm, BD. <laughs> yeah. Why is that shadow still on your face? Well, I'm just, I am hidden You're under in the, the shadow, shadow of his wings. wings. That was amazing. We should make that a song. I think it's a lot of songs. Shadow of his wings. Mm. Beth, you can't see her. She's hidden in his heart. Jenna, stop it right now. First of all, I'm going to start crying. I haven't even told you about my prayer this morning. No. That is unbelievable. Tell us all. I can't right now, <laughs> but I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> I'm crying. I can't right now. Take a deep breath. You I guys, can't. Nico tried this new thing that he learned at library story time. Yeah. Where he gets really frustrated. He's four. And I feel like I can Love see him. the testosterone coming off yeah. of his body. Yeah. It's beginning. Mm. And so he started this thing. Hold up your hand. Mm. And you breathe up with the up. Stop. And you breathe down. Anyway, Beth needs to do this so then she can tell us about her prayer. <laughs> do you remember our friend Callie from dance class? Yeah. We're doing these across the floors, as they say. This tell one. Tell the people what across the floor is. They don't know what that is. I think they do. You guys are dancers, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's where you do like a certain skill in lines across the length of the floor. So I don't remember the words. So it's like three people at a time go across the floor, then the next three go across the floor, and the next three go across the floor. But what are the words of the stuff that we do? Chasse. Mm. Chene. Ooh, chene turn. Yeah. Pique. Chene turn. Chene turn. Who's doing as we're that? Like, I, one of them did that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are they saying chene? It's chene. Because I think it's like the ri- the the rhythm, the cadence of the going. I'm just saying they're pronouncing it incorrectly. I'm pronouncing it. I would never put that on Anne. I would never. Anne is not saying it incorrectly. She's our teacher. Yeah, she's amazing. Anne, if you're listening, we love you. (laughs) So much. And we want to know about you and the Lord. Yes. We want you to know the Lord. Yeah. Anyway, we do these across the floors and all the spinny ones, all the turning ones, I remember this from like middle school dance class that you had to spot on your turns and whip your head around. I have, I thought I got this. I know, I know about spotting. I'm gonna, you don't even have to teach me again. I remember totally incapable of doing it. I mean, about to fall over, so dizzy with every across the floor. I couldn't even get all the way across the floor because I'm just, (laughs) anyway. I did one turn and then walked the rest of the way. (laughs) Jenna has a very sensitive inner ear, like all the time throwing up, things like that. Yeah. Anyway, Callie, sweet Callie in our class, she goes, look at your hand. Focus on your hand. I thought that's what you're going to do. What? What do you do with your hand? You just have to. Oh, after. After after you do a lot of spinning. Look at your hand. I just feel like the whole world is still spinning. They need to look at their hand. (laughs) Do the deep breath. And do the breathing technique that Nico taught us. Wow. Putting these together. Beth, do any of these line up with your prayer? Can you now share? I I don't think I can, honestly. I was like, as my mind was being absolutely blown, unhinged, there's no word for this. How deep, how easy, how obvious and sensible, and yet how mysterious and life-changing it was. I was like, I'm so glad I have spiritual direction on Monday. Thank God. Yeah, I was just, Yeah. (laughs) We'll still never know. We won't know until next podcast season what that one grace was from well, it's Holy like, Week Lent 2024. Here's the problem. Here's the thing. The the thing about grace <laughs> is it that it's connected to all these other graces. Yeah, you got I mean, a lot of stories to tell. There's a lot of back. <laughs> what's new? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> yeah, he was just asking me to come in his heart. And I was like, I don't want to go in there because 
I want to have my hands on you. Like, I don't like, yeah. I don't want to get in there and be like. Floating. Where are, exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be. It's too much. And it's too much. <laughs> too many things. But one of the things he said was, it's the open door you've been looking for. That doesn't mean anything to any of you, but it means a lot to me. You want to tell him about the vision boards? <laughs> <laughs> what? So we did vision boards yeah. at our Bless Wishy Phoenix night, now known as Tend. We do these Tend nights every Monday. On our community nights, we're just doing a craft. And it's kind of the greatest thing ever. And we were doing vision boards. Now, Jenna has never done a vision board with me. I do vision boards every year for the past, I don't know, eight or 10 years. So she's never met crafting. It was terrifying. <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> it's like... I was trying to talk and there was just a wall. <laughs> it was like a wall here. Was no reaction. I just I just get just very like this. I do. I get very focused. I got very intense about images mean a lot to me. So sure. like to to try and find an image that expresses this, whatever this thing is. The heart of God, my life. Right. This you know? nebulous. Yes. <laughs> Can never be nailed down. I even brought my vision board for 2024 to show them. And I still made another vision board. Like I love vision from God. Yeah. I did. I thought you were going to talk about the door. I know exactly. I'm setting it up, Jenna. Oh, we're still setting it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like you were ending the story. So I thought the plane was landing and I was like, hey, bro, you didn't put out the wheels. <laughs> I know it's so good. Anyway, <laughs> Jenna has never made a vision board. Is that correct? Correct. And um, she's just got her sweet little pile of stuff. And I see this image that I need on my board. And I just became. She stole it. Oh, well, I said, are you going to use this? Oh, did you? Yes. Of All right. Course. You stole the other things. I, I did. <laughs> Again, I just get like really in the zone and. Every time someone would come and ask for a magazine, I'd be like, here you go, Jen. It's like, oh, you didn't, you weren't going to share that with me. <laughs> I don't get to see the magazine from the table. Anyway, I took this picture of an open door because on my vision board, I have a picture of a closed door because it's a door. But I was beginning to feel like this isn't right. Like the door mm -hmm. is closed. Door is closed is very 2023 for me. Mm -hmm. If you heard my, my drawn talk, a closed door is 2023 and open door is 2024. I've heard your drawn talk and I don't remember that. Jenna, what? I'm just saying, people don't remember things. We don't remember things. Standing before the closed gate doors. Gate. Okay. Plane. Plane. In uh, trying to go to Lourdes, and the door oh, was closed. Remember that? Yeah. And then basically the entire talk was me talking about closed doors and how we get tired of closed doors. Mm -hmm. So then we just close the door. It's on like the I'm Lord. hearing this for the very first time. This is beautiful. This is unbelievable. The whole thing, actually, I'm glad we're talking about this because okay. I have been kicking myself okay. since the night of the talk people can hear it again totally you can get the virtual retreat and i would highly wait what encourage do you mean it. we're doing two more retreats oh sure yeah come to the actual retreat <laughs> come in person may 31st and june 1st and then again in the fall october 4th october 4th and 5th i'm happy that i have a chance to more explicitly describe share why i was talking about a closed door in lords closed door to lords and that's because there's this verse in the gospel, the parable of the 10 virgins, where the unwise virgins, they're out of oil, the bridegroom comes, and the wise virgins are like, we can't share this with you. You have to go to the merchants. You have to go to the sellers and get some. While they go, the bridegroom comes, and it says, and the doors were shut. That verse was like, Phew. like I have been on the wrong side of a closed door. And that is a horrible feeling. I have stood weeping in front of closed gate doors in a foreign country and i missed it i don't want you to miss eternal life mm -hmm. you know but sometimes i think i think because the holy spirit lights something up that it's so obvious yeah. that i didn't explicitly say the reason i'm talking about doors this entire talk is because of this one verse in the gospel yeah or even like a phrase of a verse exactly so i stole jenna's open door I found an image of a beautiful blue door. It was so beautiful. And mm. Beth took it. No, it was so good. Beth's whole thing was blue. It was very pretty. 
It's for our lady, you know, just for our lady. Yeah. I was thinking like the ocean. BD is always going to our lady. Mm -hmm. Tell the people about your vision board. What moved you about your vision board? Nothing. I think there were many things. I think there was the brunch napkin. The ladies that were visioning next to us used the napkin from the brunch set on their vision board. And I loved that because I had like no florals on my vision board. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. But it was a deep thing, I think. It was like, blessed is she on your vision board. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, blessed is she is not very florally. The fact that it it's representative of the brunch and 10 nights. I don't know. To me, it was like the flourishing of the community was a part of your vision. Definitely. That's what I mean. Like, I love images because they're not literal. Mm -hmm. They invite, like the gospel, like a story, you know? I think that's like a charism, though. I don't feel like that's mm. one of the charisms from St. <laughs> Catherine of Siena Institute. Oh, sure. I, well, I Like, what would that be called? Well, I shared this with the women. I think to develop vision is to exercise your prophetic muscle. Is that a charism? Prophecy is, yeah. In, in that. Yeah. I don't know that it would have been described as images. Hmm. But here's the thing, you know, and you could go back and forth, like there's an inventory with Catherine of Siena Institute called and gifted, where you kind of discern your particular charisms of which prophecy is one. But you and I, we are all baptized priest, prophet, and king. And so I think we're stepping into that prophetic office by speaking life, by aligning with God's word. We, we have to exercise the muscle, however to like develop it. Mm -hmm. I think we could do a whole episode on vision because I don't particularly like vision. So it'd be cool. I would love that because in the well mentorship program, we do a, a week <clears throat> on the Holy Spirit and invite the women to like share their hopes and dreams with God. And let me tell you something. Sometimes we are running into a brick wall. I would say actually more often than not, a brick wall with barbed wire alarms, yes. security measures. Like, I am not going there. Mm -hmm. I have been so disappointed. So why even hope or dream? Why, why even let myself develop a vision? Because it probably won't happen. Mm -hmm. Which is so deep. It's like, probably won't happen because it hasn't happened yet. Probably won't happen because I don't actually believe God is good. Probably won't happen because... I don't think he really loves me that much. I mean, there's deep stuff buried underneath yeah. Fort Knox there. I also think, again, mm. and I share this with the women about developing that muscle for prophesying, speaking life over your life. I forgot what I was going to say. This is a Michael Scott moment. I'm in the well. You know, I'm like- Did think, you watch it? Of course I did. Of course I did. Jenna? You guys. I'm just sad that the clip before that clip didn't make it in, which was him starting a sentence and not, sh he like, his, his. <laughs> kind of like I just <laughs> Like did. that. And then he explains himself. It's so funny. <laughs> Improvisation. What is it? I don't remember. <laughs> did you put that in or did the editors put that in? I asked them too. Oh, man. Well, that this is embarrassing. Why? because <laughs> I don't want it to be true, but it is. It often I'm is. Sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Beth. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> so I was praying this morning with our Holy Week. Yeah. Reflection and book, Lent devotional called Rescued. We are at the last final chapter. First of all, I started off my prayer time this morning reading the kids book. Hang on. You had prayer time this morning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was nice. That is nice. I don't have the kids book because I sent it to another writer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you were praying with it's that. It's the this greatest morning. book ever. I agree. In case you don't have one, I'm so sorry they're sold out. I just gave away my last copy to Mike, <laughs> to the writer. But it's incredible. Mm. Like, I don't understand how it's so good. Well, because of Olivia Spears. Yeah. Her she heart. said this line, like we're asking God to make what seems impossible, possible. Wow. And I was just like, I could sit with that for the rest of my life. Wow. Can you make what seems impossible possible? 
like make it seem possible or make it possible? You know what I mean? No, she said make what seems impossible, impossible, possible. Wow. Make it possible. This thing that feels like a total barrier. That is very deep because that's not just like change my mind to think that you could do anything. Actually do it. Yes. Wow. It's insane. Did that for you? Yeah. Was that something? Did you know what that was that you that feels impossible that you are asking him or hoping to have the faith to ask him to make possible? No. Okay. <laughs> just just highlighted it. Just, it meant something to me. So I wrote mm. it down. Yeah. Trying to pay attention. Is there something that comes to mind for you? Yeah, obviously. What is it? I, I'm under the impression that when everybody reads anything that resonates with them, it's yeah. because they're putting, they're making it about themselves. But maybe it's just me. Well, things I think get highlighted, mm. but I don't have the space really. Totally. To like unpack that right then. But I also don't want to let that pass by. Yes, that's very good. It's a very good discipline to develop. Yeah. I think even capturing the graces, paying attention, they're like little seeds and they'll ruminate and marinate and we'll just ask the Lord to cultivate them. Like you don't need to get in there and do the work of making them grow. Only he can do that anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, like if I had longer prayer time, I would have like sat with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the Lord doesn't even need a long time. Just a short time for him to highlight. Yes. But absolutely. I'm a little bit, I'm like a ship mm. on the ocean. Yeah. A big Navy SEAL ship. And I get pummeled. I get bombed every two seconds. But I'm just trying to stay the course and keep going. <laughs> just, I'm like on the mission. Guys, who's still bombing me. So I sometimes have to like deflect. But I just got to keep going. Is that an analogy work? It's amazing. <laughs> Also, <laughs> just makes me feel a lot of things yeah, for you. Yeah. It's so you. Just stay in the court. <laughs> just got to keep going. Well, what's going on out Jenny, there? Jenny, here's the, th- here's the crazy thing, which like, again, this is a grace upon grace upon grace moment. But Navy SEALs is like a very deep grace for me. Yeah. And I don't think you know that. <laughs> and this is the second time on this podcast episode that you've said Navy SEALs and both times I wanted to start crying. Yeah. So I think you have more vision, which is just an expression of relationship and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Than you think you do. Yeah. You're being prophetic right now. We just want to exercise that for the Lord, which is why I'm telling you, you're already doing it. Yeah. Which is basically all I'm doing in the well. You know how to do this. Mm. You can believe that that was God's voice, you know? Yes. Okay, <laughs> stay in the course. It's a great analogy. Okay, can I rock your... So then I moved on to the women's book. Here we go. You guys. Okay, I wrote yeah, down... Yeah, your journal. I wrote down something Susanna said. Mm. We're all waiting for rescue. We're all waiting for rescue. Mm-hmm. Okay, we could sit with that for another year. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, we all want a hero. We have a hero. And then I was like... Superheroes, you know, they all wear masks and have on all the stuff, armor, Mm -hmm. protection, Mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. Our hero has a face. Yeah. He's not masked. He's not protecting himself. Our hero is laid bare. Wow. Let us see him. Mm -hmm. Like so vulnerable. Our hero is so vulnerable Mm -hmm. and so strong, and he rescues us. Like our hero is fully human, the only perfect human. Yes. Not a superhuman. Whoa. He is perfect human. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, cool doesn't really. (laughs) He has a name, a mom, a dad, friends. His skin. Mm-hmm. I can't with his skin right now, Jenna. Are you trying to make me start crying? So that's what I said. Skin. <laughs> superheroes. I wish I knew more about superheroes to like really. Yeah, we're not Marvel fans over dive here. Dive deep in the lore because it's a it's a very good analogy. Mm. The Lord is really trying to communicate something to you personally. 
Because I think there's something in us, whether it's a fairy tale or a superhero movie, that like you can relax. Like the world can be on fire. Mm. The ship is being bombed perpetually. But like when the superhero comes on the screen, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I felt this way watching The Legend of Tarzan. Which has been a deep reflection for me. Wait, remind me, that is a Disney movie or this is a different thing? It's a live action, oh, relatively Disney recent Disney movie. I meant it was an animated, but you're saying it's a live action. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I don't care about the, I don't think I've ever even seen the cartoon. Someone was watching it on a plane and I'm like, why am I so, why do I want to watch this over this person's shoulder without even sound on? But it was something, I was paying attention. Like I'm being attracted to Whatever this is, it took me a long time to even realize it was Tarzan, but it was a similar feeling of like, this is going very badly and I'm feeling very stressed, but I know Tarzan is going to come. Yeah. There is something very childlike and I think it's something very feminine, this longing and this trust and the relief that comes with a hero. Yes. I remember a long time ago you asked me, because like God as savior means a lot to me. Yeah. That. God saved me. And I remember you asking me, like, what does that mean to you? Or what did he save you from? Mm. Something like that. And I still don't have an answer. Mm. (laughs) But I guess I'm curious, like, do you relate to God as Savior at all? Is there any element of being saved by a hero? Like, does that mean anything to you personally? What a sweet question. But I just wonder... (laughs) <laughs> if you didn't have an answer to that, I'm thinking about you because I know. is it so visceral for you that it doesn't have to be one thing, that it's just like this feeling in your whole body and your whole life that like, I needed help, I needed saving and Jesus, you came and did that. So it's not like a deep dive one particular thing. It's just this like overarching, visceral understanding that God saved you. Is it more like that rather than like a pinpoint? Mm. It's like a. Yeah, like I very much feel like I know and have felt the like depth of my depression Mm -hmm. or despair or loneliness, insecurity. And I've been picked up from that spot. And like stood up and said, like, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. And so I feel that very viscerally, like, mm-hmm. like the little me, which still experiences this as an adult, mm-hmm. being like laid down, helpless, totally and utterly alone mm-hmm. and being picked up and like sometimes held, sometimes mm-hmm. carried. Mm-hmm. But like being looked at in the eye and saying, I'm right here. Like what you just said and described as finally being able to breathe a sigh of relief, like he came. Yeah. And so I feel saved from utter darkness. Mm. The darkness I don't even know about yet. I've, I've been saved from that. And I don't know how anyone could know that and not like fall into the arms of him and want to live and be with him forever. That's the only real response that can happen in my head. I wonder if people just don't, they run from that feeling of darkness and aloneness or loneliness. They don't allow themselves to feel that. Okay. So they don't even look for a remedy to it. They have no knowledge that a hero can come and save them from that because they're so busy like saving themselves. I don't Mm, know. Yeah. I definitely wasn't looking for a savior. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He just came. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sometimes it's so hard to just like keep chatting when I'm just melting. (laughs) Yeah, I feel that. I was looking for love, you know, under every rock. That would be my story. Mm. Like, please, someone love me. Yeah. And he did. Can I tell you a really sweet grace? 
I'm kind of always joking with the Lord, with other people, but you know, there's like truth to it. I'm like, why am I such a bottomless pit? It's like I can have so much love, friendship, understanding, time with people. But primarily I'm talking about the Lord. Like it's just never enough. Like I am like a bottomless pit. It's like I, I'm saying it like laughing. <clears throat> like, ugh, I'm so needy, you know? <laughs> and he was just like, I don't know, it's just an understanding, you know, not certainly not audible words, but just in my heart I understood you're like me. Like I, I have this infinite capacity to love and an infinite hunger for love. And that's how you're like me. <laughs> how do you take something that is so like empty and shameful and make it actually something beautiful? Wow. You know? Yeah. So I guess if I thought about how he saved me, I would say he saved me from shame. Mm -hmm like suffocating shame, not just from like sexual sin as I, I've shared. I think maybe that was the first and highest like on fire need, yes. like save me from this. But even savior, like to, I don't feel that in my body the way I do deliver, like he delivered me. Like my favorite gospel is Mark 5, the Gerasene demoniac, because I am the Gerasene demoniac. And he cast out a legion of evil spirits from me, things that tormented me. That, that line, that verse in the gospel where it says like day and night, I don't even know if I could say it, day and night he was like bruising himself with rocks. Like that was me, you know? Yeah. Just like in so much pain that I was hurting myself, not in an actual way, but, in, but that, uh, this is ultimately what sin is, you know? Yeah, just like punishing myself all the time. And he came across the sea in a storm. Like he didn't let anything stop him. He came for me. But to me, he's like the divine exorcist there, you know, yeah. in a very real way. He was a deliverer. But it's important why these words mean something to you. You know, you feel savior differently than I feel deliverer, even though they're both like the saving action of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. It's just very hard. I just want to talk to you and cry and go to the chapel, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just makes me want to pray, which I think is what we hope for, for you guys. Yeah, turn us off. Pay attention. If there was something and you were like, oh, I've never seen God that way. I've never felt God that way. I've never thought about my own story that way. Pay attention. Write it down in your journal. Skin, the one word. <laughs> I cannot. There was one part of the kids book that I read that I'm curious your thoughts on. Liv invited kids and me <laughs> to imagine pouring out a water pitcher until the very last drop. Mm -hmm. And she said, our Lord poured himself out mm -hmm. to total emptiness mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Another thing BD needs to go pray with. I'm feeling many, many things. I can't wait to hear at some of time. them. Well, actually, it's connected to this grace, this conversation I had with the Lord about my own bottomless pitness. Yeah. You know? And him, again, just taking something that I feel is shameful or broken about me and making it beautiful. He showed me, first of all, that I was like him. And second of all, that that emptiness, that capacity, that cavern <laughs> of just space, he will fill. Mm. It's a really beautiful, like pouring out to be filled. And I think we understand that from our perspective, but just thinking about from the perspective of Jesus, he's pouring everything out. Scripture says he emptied himself, taking on the role of a slave, he emptied himself. I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure where it is. Philippians. Wow. 2.13. Around there. Is it? Can I just check? Seven. Two seven. Oh, Two so seven. close, BD. He emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, becoming the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. Super. Very human. 
He's very Clark Kent. It's a great verse. I need to read Philippians now. Love Philippians. It's making me want to read Philippians. Yeah, there's just this like dynamic between emptiness and fullness that I'm praying with, really as a grace of the stars, that what felt cold and empty and terrifyingly alone is like when God lifts the veil, I understand that the limitlessness of the universe is profound fullness. When you know the Lord, it's like everything is flipped on its head. Everything that I see in the negative is actually something beautiful. There's, there's something beautiful there that's just hidden in the same way as humanity veiled his divinity. In the same way, uh, the bread of the Eucharist it veils the true presence of Jesus. There's something at play there for me in emptiness and fullness. This priest friend of mine recently was talking about being profoundly rich and profoundly poor at the same time, that we're profoundly rich because we have everything from the Lord, but we're always giving it back, which makes us profoundly poor. Wow. We give him everything and he gives us everything. And this is the, the never-ending cycle of pouring out and being filled. Yes. What did it mean to you? You know, I want to look like Jesus. Mm. And so I'm like, what does that mean for me to be poured out till the very last drop? Mm -hmm. And that felt slightly terrifying. Well, it's interesting because I'm like, you are doing that. Yeah. It's beautiful that you want to do it more. <laughs> you want to <laughs> understand what it means. But yeah. I think it's one of those things you're, I say it all the time, but like you're so close, you can't even see it. Yeah. I see that. Yeah, I see you pouring out that little last drop, you know, which is such an act of faith. If I give everything, will you give me everything, you know? Yeah. Will you fill me again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if it wasn't just about being filled again? What if it was about like being empty with him who emptied himself, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's both and, of course, because he's emptying himself to fill us. But I don't know. There's like a oneness. There's a unity in our emptiness. Like he understands that because he emptied himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the resurrection is real. Mm. So there is life after death. There is life after dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think it feels like there can't possibly be life after I pour out every last drop. I'm kind of stuck on the last drop, you know? Like imagining, again, I'm very visual. So like imagining a picture with like a single last drop like hanging on. Yeah. And I just think like that's enough. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a different way of reflecting on it. But one time I was just really, really struggling with anger and really just coming to terms with the fact that I have a lot of anger, you know, and it felt very overwhelming, like how deep and how default and visceral this response is, like this thing in me. And I saw it as a volcano, just like bubbling, just like. It's right here. It's like all right at the surface. I think that might have been I was saying to the Lord, like, it's just right at the surface, you know? And I saw him standing on the edge of the volcano, and he showed me his fingertip with a single drop of blood. And he put his hand out over the lava. And that single drop of blood, like, calmed and cooled and quieted the whole volcano. Something that felt so overwhelming to me was tamed by a single drop of his blood. I'm thinking too of the Chronicles of Narnia that I've been reading this year. In the silver chair, there's this scene where a, a, a young girl, Jill Pohl, who's never met Aslan, he appears to her and she's utterly alone. And he just walks into this forest and lays beside a river. And she's just had this long journey. She's terrified, she's frozen. And she wants to go to the river to drink. She doesn't want to face the lion. She doesn't know who he is. Uh, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so she asks him, like, will you back up? Will you get away? He was like, no. And she says something to him, like, will you consume me if I come close? And he basically says, yes. 
but not in the way. I mean, I'm like crying right now thinking about it. And she comes to the water. He basically says like, you have to choose to come. Like you're going to die of thirst or you can come to the water, but I'm going to stay right here. You can approach me. Wow. And she comes to the water and she drinks and she's so thirsty. But one drink, one gulp of this water was all it took. She was like so satisfied by the purity, the coolness. She was totally refreshed, like mind, body, and spirit from a single drink of the lion's water. I just think even in like the poverty, the seeming poverty of a single drop being emptied to a single drop with the Lord, it's just more than enough, Yeah, you know? So if he emptied himself and all we need is a drop, how rich are we? Yeah. What does that mean for our lives? Well, I think we, ha- we have to come and drink, you mm-hmm. know? You have to approach the lion. I don't know. There's like a, there's a thread for me through all these things that we're experiencing. The superhero, like there's something in it, you know, this like utter relief and yet like the terror Mm -hmm. (laughs) of like what this actually looks like, what the cross actually looks like, who the lion actually is. So there's like a courage needed on our part to just acknowledge the darkness, acknowledge the emptiness. Acknowledge the thirst. Yeah. Yeah. And come to him, but like, and let him come to us again, that like dynamic of this cyclical kind of thing. But, you know, in the words of Jenna Gizar, we have to do that every single day. Yeah. I started reading this book last night. I couldn't put it down. I'm literally 10 years late to this book. It's called A Thousand Gifts by Ann Voskamp. I think that's maybe 16 years. Uh, It is a long time. I'm guessing you read it when it came. Are you serious? Yeah. She writes like you. It's just very like deep and dark and poetic and like. And you're like, what are you talking about? No, I was riveted. I could. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, where where are we? For sure. For sure. She's getting into these deep things. You're literally looking up when it was published. Of course. I don't know how to find it. Even the Grace. 2011. Okay. 12 years. 13 years. 13. Sorry. (laughs) Even the grace of reading that book is because I had an image of a bird's nest connected to a thousand other graces. (laughs) And I was like, gosh, I've seen those kinds of bird eggs before. And it's that book. And I was like, you just follow the Lord. Do you know what I mean? You, he wanted me to read that. I could tell you, this is insane. Our lady said something to me in prayer. And I read those words in that book when I started it last night. It was bananas, but like in a deeper way, like I didn't fully understand. I still don't what Our Lady said, I, let me just, I'm sorry, grace within a grace within a grace. I just saw her like holding her womb. She was, she was pregnant with our Lord. And she said, remember. And it's connected to this like image, I, or not image, it's experience I had of like touching this Our Lady of Guadalupe painting that had been touched to the tilma and like, like feeling profoundly, really feeling Jesus and Mary in that picture. This like deep, deep grace connected to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then I opened this book and she said, like, when we remember gratitude, when we remember, he re-members us into wholeness. Did you guys know that's what remember means? Is it? Yeah, that's, it's the etymology of the word re, like to do again, member. Wow. What are you talking about? Oh, Anne. Re-members us. And I'm like, the answer to feeling so fractured wow. is to remember who God is and what he's done. What are you talking about? This is my response. To, anyway, what am I even telling you? Oh, I started reading 1000 Gifts. Maybe I was trying to tell you the remember thing. <laughs> I think that's kind of insane that we do that every mass. Remember. Puts us back together. Do this in memory of me. Remember. Crazy. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. Wow. It's actually connected to the Eucharist. Okay. It was, she was talking about manna every single day. Here we go. Every single day. <laughs> I had to find it. I had to find it. <laughs> Picked it up. The thread was floating. Listen, we found it. <laughs> okay. So she says manna, the actual word manna, as in Israelites, 
starving, complaining against God. Did you bring us out here to die? And God's like, calm down. I'll feed you. I'll send you manna, this like, this like flaky substance that appears uh, when the morning dew dries. And it's so sweet. It tastes like honey and bread. It's these wafers weeping. We should see as Catholics, yeah. this is the Eucharist. This is what God is going to do in fullness at the Last Supper. We should see the remnant of it, right? The promise of it. <laughs> anyway, she says that the word manna means, what is it? The word manna means, what is it? They don't even know how God is feeding them, what he is feeding them with. So she calls it a mystery. And she says, we're supposed to eat the mystery. She is not Catholic. But I'm like, this is, this is it. Yeah. We need to eat the mystery every single day. We need to drink from the river every single day of living water. We need to be saved by the superhero every single day. We need to be brave enough to come to the lion every single day. I just think most of us are fine. It's very hard for me to, I only live one life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I am not fine. So no, I don't really. So it's important for you to like unpack this for people for whom they're fine. Yeah, we're just going to work. Yeah. Taking care of the kids. Making dinner, putting the kids to bed, getting up, yeah, going to work, doing it all over again. What do I need to be saved from? Mm. What do I need delivering from? Well, okay, I'm okay. I can take care of myself. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, I'm like happy and mm. relatively successful, and okay, have a good family. That's a big one. Yeah. Huge. I do think I think people who have like a secure family, why would you go look at? Yeah. You would just call your dad, you know? Well, even if you have a great family. Here we go. If you go underneath it. Here we go. There's something there. This is what I'm saying. I'm okay. I'm just making dinner. I'm just putting the kids to bed. Okay, but yeah. If we just drop down like one level even. Yeah, you don't have to go dive in you don't have in to. the deep end. You don't have to do that. Just take a step on the Baja step. We love a Baja step. <laughs> <laughs> you you still got your head above water. Yeah. You're just getting some sun, also getting some water. Both and, you know? 1,000%. <laughs> you can bring your own drink to the pool. This, uh, for some of us, even the Baja step, we're in the... <laughs> it's like the little boy. The drowning. little boy. I've been thinking about that the whole time we've been talking. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Totally. The, so this is my question. Okay. Like, if you're really honest, okay. alone on your drive home, aren't you tired? Physically tired, you know? Start there. Wow. Aren't you kind of tired of, like doing it on your own and like everything being up to you? Aren't you tired of the pressure? Aren't you tired of letting people down? I wonder if, if tired, kind of like how hunger and thirst are invitatory. I wonder if tired is maybe an entry point for people. People for whom like- Aren't hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the wisdom of, of like deep diving savior for you or deliverer for me. Like there are different entry points to descend from the shallows or the shore even into the water. Yeah. Let's pray. Please do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for putting on flesh. For coming down here. For walking with us.
for willingly dying for us. Thank you for laying your life down in the place where we were supposed to lay. Thank you for shedding your blood for us, God. I ask you, God, to light a candle, turn on the light in a place that's gone dark in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. Thank you, God, for reaching out your hand to us. For standing us up or for holding us or for inviting us to take one little step to you to perfect love God give us eyes to see and ears to hear your movements in our life Mother Mary, we entrust our lives to you. Please pray for us. Please intercede for us at your son's throne. Thank you for being a good mother to us, for wiping our brow. for giving us a cup of living water. God, we give you all the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's something so deep and true about walking with Our Lady. This Lent, like in the devotional, and just in the interior life. Like she knows the way, you know? Yeah. Thanks, Jenna. There she is. <laughs> I love how she got her, her place back. Yeah. You pulled her out. I did. And she has survived. She made it. I mean, she's survived Avila. I know. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> Thanks, PD. Thanks, friend. Talk soon. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.